Hello, I'm Marco Flag of uh, Desert Star Systems. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your ropeless workshop today. And uh, while this is going on, I'm actually flying somewhere over the North Atlantic. So I decided to pre-record my presentation for you. And then Kim Savicki of Sustainable Seas will, will answer uh, your questions on my behalf. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is two ropeless systems, not just one, but two. One of them, ropeless Fisher Coastal, is optimized for uh, the smaller operations, coastal fishing in general, uh, and then in general, ropeless Fisher Offshore is for the larger offshore operations. Let's take a look at the system components here for the coastal system. The, the main feature is that it contains three operations. So all you have to do to activate it is flip the switch to the on position. And then this SPM4 deck box just broadcasts a release code that's assigned to all of your equipment and your equipment only, which can be broadcast either through an over the side transducer that you can just pull open or uh, through a hull transducer and it triggers this acoustic release. So the releases simply pop up when they are within range that can be up to 400 meters, but it depends on the transducer you use. This one here has like a light bulb style beam pattern in all directions. Uh, the whole mounted transducer uh, points in a specific direction with a beam angle of 60 to 90 degrees. And so you can be more specific, so you don't have things popping up too far away. The limitations of the coastal system is that since the release does not actually reply, if nothing pops up, makes it a bit harder, can make it quite a bit harder to grapple it. Although there's other ways of finding where it is. And also if you fish in very strong currents, uh, you may not have enough control over exactly the, what moment it pops up and how far you are away. If it's too far away, your buoys might come up to the surface and then submerge before uh, you get to them. So that's the coastal version. As you'll see, it's also uh, uh, more economical. So that's, of course, an advantage. Then there's the offshore version, which is the one that we really introduced first. And it is operated through a tablet computer, an Android tablet, like you see here. Uh, you tend to use it with individual release. So you select one specific release, like this one here. It has some code. You range to it and you position the boat above. Then you click a release button. Then you get an acknowledge and there's a countdown an audible countdown that's estimating when the buoy will pop up at the surface. So it's very precise that way. Um, the advantages of this method are that you do get the acoustic ranging and status reporting. So you can do more precise fishing in high, uh, in high current situations, more precise recovery. It makes it way easier to grapple because you know exactly where a unit is if a snag has occurred. We have something called public interrogate that helps uh, lost or moved gear be relocated. So, so somebody else may come across it and they get a reply from the submerged unit saying, here I am and I belong to this fisher. And then our software has a means of automatically forwarding that information. All right, so what I'll do next is I'll uh, show you uh, a few videos to show how, how the system actually operates in the field. Um, I'll start with the coastal system. I turned down the sound on these videos and I'll just talk over it. So here we go for a deployment of the coastal system. This one is by uh, uh, Kim Saviki and it's done in Scotland at Loch Broom. All right, so here you can see where um, an anchor is going over the side. Uh, I don't know if they have a trap in this particular demo. Here you saw, now see the release bag with the acoustic release, the white thing on the side. And now it's submerged. And uh, the uh, transducer that's over the side transducer now going in. 
Okay, and somebody is flipping the switch on, which initiates the broadcast release. So you can just leave the switch on the whole time. Here, uh, that was pretty passive. We are, uh, pops up, so obviously this one is edited for brevity. And uh, now that the buoy is up, you have the haul line go through the wind shear, and uh, you start hauling in. Typically, the haul line would now be collected uh, uh, in a bag, filling up the next bag. You know, so you always have an empty bag at the surface. Um, and here we go. The bag is up. Uh, a video stopped here for some reason, but but that's essentially the the long and short of it. A very very simple type operation. Now here's uh, another a very short video from from Kim. Just uh, two guys throwing in a, a trap. And you can see it here. It's just uh, uh, super simple. They have just watch that. You, yeah. you can see the trap as well. Three, two, one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. And everything is in the water. So I guess I can say Kim calls this system, our coastal system, the quote unquote blonde system because she's blonde and even a blonde can know, can use it so the implication is that the, the use of it uh, is just super simple I hope that wasn't too inappropriate here this one also from Kim uh, is going to show you an underwater view so we have this from the perspective of a trap on the seafloor and the back here is floating above you can't actually see the, the, the ARC acoustic release. It's on, on one of the two sides here, but you'll see the buoy pop out. So here we go. And there it comes out. You can see they, they go up to the uh, surface um, quite fast about a fathom a second, so 50 fathoms uh, usually at 50 um, seconds for it to pop up, and that helps a lot in strong currents because essentially the the these uh, buoys, you know, float uh, down downstream with the current and then rise in in zero relative current. So they always reach the surface even in very high currents. It's just have to uh, not so far, uh, but they will only stay at the surface until all your slack is gone, and then they'll they'll submerge again. All right, next, let's take a look at how the uh, offshore system, rather than the coastal system, operates. This is from uh, Sea Terrano by the Cold Water Lobster Association out of Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, uh, back in 20. 2018. It did also includes uh, virtual gear marking. We were at the beginning of that yet. It's much more advanced now, but uh, you'll get the general idea. So here a trawl is deployed. Uh, all the traps went out and next you can see this, this giant bag uh, uh, going out. This is uh, deep water here. Um, uh, here you see the virtual gear marking. Each one of these dots is a, a gear location. Green one are the fissures. Red ones belong to a different fissure. You can see how the gear field is changing. That's one of the other boats coming by. So they were fishing at their uh, normal, placing their trawls at their, their normal spacing. Uh, I think it's a uh, quarter, quarter mile for trawls of 25. Um, so here the skipper is about to trigger a release action. This is with our old software, but the new software isn't that, uh, it's, it's fairly similar, I guess. It's a arming station for a release, and now the release acknowledged it, it's armed, um, and it's, it's triggering the release, and now the release itself is acknowledged 10 seconds later. The buoy starts rising to the surface. In this shot, you already see it at the surface. And uh, one of the deckies is fishing it out of the water. Again, high currents here, you want to work 
fast make use of the voice time of the surface if you are in a, in a fast current. So now the empty bag comes up. And here the anchor of the trowel, and now then the first trap would come up, and so now all the traps are being collected again. And then you have notice a full bag now because it's at the end of the trowel, so it was uh, not triggered, it's only used there as a backup. And here you see um, uh, another trowel go into the water, anchor goes down. And then finally the release bag. There is another boat again doing its fishing. Again, the gear field is changing. You always see like two markers connected by a line, so that's a trawl. So here um, uh, is the rearming mechanism. You have to change this wire. Some people complain about it, but it's a very, very reliable mechanism and it avoids a, a dynamic O-ring steel, so you don't have to worry about it flooding. And really, it hasn't proven to be a problem for most fishers. We do have an optional cartridge system, so you can very easily replace a cartridge, take care of the wire later, but you know it does raise the cost by $200, so we haven't really seen a market demand for it. Um, you know. Most people just rearm the wire. It's not a big deal. All right. Now the gear is slowly being recovered. And that's uh, the end of the operation. So here it says it was about 60 trawl sets and recoveries with up to 11 trawls in place at any one time. And they were all recovered. And no, no gear conflict occurred. Okay, I'll, I'll conclude here with a few reasons as to why you might want to consider selecting a Desert Star ropeless in particular. Number one reason, of course, is money. It by these ropeless system standards, it's actually reasonably affordable. And uh, fishers, what we've experienced is they do tend to recover the cost. After a few years, you know, just by reducing gear loss, gear loss does tend to go down. You eliminate the poaching potential, better access, gear access, fewer traps and catch and high currents is important for some. Just a more predictable catch. And uh, when you look at the costs here, uh, here is the cost per release coastal and offshore, you know, uh, that um, depends on the on how many you buy from 100 down to one, 720 to a little bit over $1,000 for coastal, about twice as much for offshore, then there is the boat electronics. And so if you bought a, oops, sorry, if you bought a system with 50 releases, uh, and the deck unit, then that would set you back about 47k US for coastal or 88k offshore. And then if you go for 100 releases, it's 76k and 163k. So clearly you have to, to finance it, but you know, the gear also lasts a very, very long time. Um, uh, reason number two for our system is probably flexibility and independence. You know, you can make your own bags or if you prefer cages. Make yourself cages, uh, acoustic releases, be it the ALC1 or ALC2, you know, it's the offshore and coastal version are quite light. They don't weigh much once submerged, and that lends itself well to floating bags, but also bottom sitting cages. And you can, you know, service the units uh, yourself if you're into that. So it gives you very good independence. Um, why select Desert Star Ropeless? Reason number three. Well, it's just a system that's proven to last a very long time. The earliest users of it now have it for 13 years in ongoing service, and I'm sure it'll reach 20 years. Who knows, could reach 30 years. It's just designed so that uh, there's not much to fail. The fusible link release mechanism that we have here, yeah, it does mean you have to insert that wire, but you also don't have a dynamic 
O-rings here on a rotating shaft, which is oftentimes a, a cause of flooding, be that due to crevice corrosion if it's a stainless steel shaft, or just sand, mud grinding its way into the seal, and we avoid that entirely. We have only one moving part, this loosely hinged uh, lever, um, and it's it's not really uh, going through on the inside, so there's nothing dynamic, nothing moving going on the inside. Then all the water exposed components are titanium or plastic, so they don't corrode. And yeah, again, super simple and reliable mechanism. What do I have as reason number four? Uh, this system is also very reliable once you have experience with it, not before. That's why in, in, in C trials, you tend to see lower pop-up rates, but they get to be very high once you really got it tuned in. But it can also take three years until all your operations are tuned in. That's been our experience. Three seasons of fishing. You know, you get better and better and you hit some snags some problems and then you fix them and so on. Uh, but the experienced fishers go 30 to 50 release cycles between snags. Now, when you have a snag, doesn't mean you lose the gear. You know, we do have the acoustic range in the public interrogate. I did mention that you have the bag floating above the seafloor makes for very good grappling targets. So almost all gear is really recovered. Uh, few fishers are willing to leave that expensive gear on the seafloor, so we see uh, observed gear loss rates generally less than 4% a year, maybe down to 2%, uh, even going a whole year without any loss. Um, uh, reason number five, fishers around the world keep buying it because they want it. So, so far our customers, there's one of them that that that's bought it for way else, they, they lost their fishing permit. Uh, and had to do something about it, that's in South Africa. But the other ones, it's just, you know, they want to avoid the poaching, the gear loss, uh, get better access in those fast currents, just have a more reliable catch for their customers in some cases, and that translates to more profits, a better business, a secured future. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Kim Saviki for your uh, questions and her answers. Thank you very much.